What I actually want to do is also go go over Pain vs VKS. Because I know B, B I know BTS is live right now. Right? Like I know BTS is live right now. But I feel like people actually have no idea what happened in the grand finals. Like literally no idea. Like literally no idea. So I feel like it's really good content for me to go over the grand grand final games. What do you guys think? Because I feel like people a lot of people are talking shit, but they don't really understand like what's happening, you know? At all. Guys, this series is really interesting for me because like <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the Pain vs VKS series. Um very disappointing series for me. We went uh three three points to Pain and one point to VKS, and the series ended up only going to four games. And um I know a lot of people were really curious about the series, and I think I saw a lot of like misinformation, especially around like why picks are good, um, what picks work, what picks don't work. And the, the truth is for me, like Pain, Pain played a really bad series. That's that's my honest, that's my honest truth, guys. I thought I would still go over it because I think it's it's a very it's something that everyone wants to watch, you know. For me, Pain played really really bad. If they're playing a good game, I think we should have got three zero because we were playing very very terribly. Um, and for me, Pain is a team with a lot of inherent flaws in their in their game, that is really exploitable if if you know what to do, if you know what to exploit, and if you know what to look for, right? So let's have a look at the draft first, um, because I know this is like the biggest thing, right? People are saying, "Oh my god, like this Smolder, we gave Smolder three games in a row." The way Pain operates is Pain is a team that don't really know how to play side lane. I think that most people that actually know high level League of Legends agree with me when I say that Pain is not a team that plays three lanes really well. And it's been something that's been known in CB LoL for many years. So the way they operate is they need to play through mid pro and they need to play two lanes quite often. Um, so when when they are the best is normally when they have three options available right uh three three way three con kind of conditions one is mid priority early game mid priority to enable their early game because pain is a team that really want to snowball from early mid game because their mid late game macro is actually quite horrendous um and they don't really play side and two they're a team that wants to engage tools so often, oftentimes what they want to be looking for is they want to be looking for like Ash or Jin, like engage support with engage jungle or engage support, engage AD carry with a carry jungler, right? So for example, if Pain has, for example, like Misfortune Nautilus with a Lilia, they don't perform so well. This is a team that doesn't perform so well with one source of engage. So they always try to get two sources of engage and to enable Karaoke. The, the, the best solution that Pain has found was to play an engage AD carry so that they can play AP junglers. Does that make sense? I didn't need to rewatch the game, but I, I did rewatch the game a lot of times, but I just came to the same conclusion really. So like Smolder is a really bad pick for this team because Smolder is a champion that scales, that has no tools, it doesn't get mid priority and it loses a lot of lanes. It's just a scaling pick. Now, that's that's point one, but point two is also that Smolder's a champion when played really well is very very fucking OP guys. For example, when Chobi played Smolder, I think this this pick was like absurdly OP. He had like two hundred stacks at nineteen minutes. But when Pain played Smolder, this pick was the worst fucking piece of shit I've ever seen. Like I know Dinkiero very clearly likes the champion, but he played it really badly. That's just the honest truth, and I can show you inside the game. He had like. 110 stacks at like 26 minutes guys the, the guy was like completely boosted on the champion but people don't really see this kind of stuff right so how does pain win games they have two sources of engages they're very very good at playing team fights because they have really good individual skill like individual skills they, they know their opportunities and they know what to do individually right they have really good individual play so they know how to play team fights well and I think it's shined throughout the series. And um, they, they really thrive off mid-priority. So based off this information, how do we kind of need to draft around pain? For me, the way that you draft around pain is very simple. One, you, you try not to give them Ash. 
And if you give Ash, you don't give them, like you try not to give them Jin. If they take Jin, you take a bot lane with push. So that's the third kind of condition. Pain is a team that functions a lot better with bot push. Because Kuri doesn't play around mid very well. Kuri doesn't really know how to play around mid. So he's a support player that really needs priority on bot lane to get vision and river and to allow Karyok to play the game. So to be honest, when I saw Smolder in the game, I thought that the draft was already over. And if you actually break down the draft, Pain Gaming is playing Sejuani versus Lilia. So it's like losing jungle matchup out farmed with no mid priority. So Lilia can scale for free, right? So we're already really, really happy. We have mid push. We have like free scaling uh, jungle and Lilia is probably the best jungle in the patch in this patch in 1415. And then we have canopy Katie carry, right? And Ezreal is not an OP pick. Ezreal is just like, Titan is like Solon and Ezreal, but it's not a champion that's OP. It's an okay blind if you can play it with Leona or Braum. So you're, you're essentially playing Ezreal blind with no mid push, a tempo jungler that is going to have no mid push to invade. And you're going to get counter picked AD carry and counter picked support because we're red side. So we end up taking the Jin, And why do we end up taking the Jin? Because Jin is really, really OP with AP junglers. So what we're saying is, okay, we can counter pick Ezreal with a champion like Kalista. We can even opt to pick a champion like Misfortune and get Pryo. But because we can get Pryo with support counter pick anyway, we can secure support counter pick with more setup on bot side, which allow our AP jungle to play very aggressively. So yeah, Lilia in this patch was like the most highly contested jungle across every region. Right, it's it's a higher tier than uh, brand. It is the highest contested AD uh, jungle, and the only kind of answers into Lilia were Vi, but you get outscaled at two items because Lilia gets Zonyas. Um, so they often picked like Vi compositions, Vi Rumble, etc., or they picked Viego, which is a jungle that like wins one v one versus Lilia versus Lilia can find Lilia early, or and here's the third option, Maokai. And Maokai was almost always banned, right? So when you look at the when you look at the game, Lilia for, for the him they had three three answers, and the three answers were not so good, right? Uh, you had so so they have no push bot, no push mid, counter pick jungle, and what ends up happening in four five? Well, they end up we end up taking the Leona blind. Now this is not a call that I opted for. This is something that Prods wanted. Um, for me, it doesn't really make sense here, but I can understand as a takeaway, right? So what was Prods thinking here? Well, for me, it's very obvious. Prods didn't want to play against Kuri's Braum or Kuri's Alistair, right? Uh, because Kuri's best champions are Alistair, Braum, and then Rel, right? So by taking Alistair and Braum away, he wants to take away the best pairing left with Leona. So Prod is actually not drafting for comp here, he's drafting for individual. And that, that's okay, because if you want confidence going into the series, it, it's completely fine to do that, right? And we have more tools than one. We have Jin for setup. So that's kind of the idea behind the Leona. Um, Lilia for sure is, is a very good pick in 1415, guys. Lilia for sure is like the highest contested uh, jungler in this patch. Um, you can just see off like the, the, the presence. Um, so 42% presence, but... When you look at top leagues, you're looking at 50 to 60%. And the reason it's super highly contested is because you're assuming that Maokai is going to be banned and Sejuani is not so good into Lilia. So, like Lilia counter Sejuani, right? So in regions where people can play Nidalee, right? Lilia prior goes down. But if Nidalee is not very good in this in the region. So for example, like Nidalee is terrible in, in Brazil. Everyone agree? There's maybe two junglers that can play Nidalee, and that's Carioca and Decimus. And we were sure that Carioca wouldn't play Nidalee in the series. So when Maokai is out in the game, Lilia becomes naturally the highest priority jungler inside the game because Nidalee is 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 not really a champion, right? So Maokai is perma banned. So now you have to play Brando Sejuani. Why is Brando Sejuani not so good into Lilia? Well, Lilia wins 1v1 versus Brand. She has a really easy time playing team fights. And you just farm faster, so you outscale, right? And Sejuani just straight up loses the whole game. So, so for, for sure, like Lydia is a very, very highly contested pick, especially in a region that doesn't play Nidalee. 
Um, and of course, both junglers really, really like playing the champion, right? So when you pair, when you pair the Nidalee, uh, when you pair the Lilia with a champion like uh, Nautilus or Jin, the, the champion becomes very, very strong to play. Ivan is not so good into Lilia too. Ivan, Ivan is really bad into Lilia and Brand, because you lose one v one and you just get kited, and basically you, you get out damaged and outscaled. So Ivan is a champion that's really strong level one to four, and then in early mid game you spike really hard, because you get shielding items and shielding items are really cheap, right? But once again, like Nidalee or Renekton is not a thing this series, guys. People are not playing Nidalee or Renekton. So if you look at Pain Game One draft, it's really fucking terrible. Because they're taking losing bot matchup, losing push, losing jungle, losing mid pro. Right? And then um, they opt to blind Jax into Lilia, which is really good into Jax, into Corky that can play very well into Jax, Jin, one of the best AD carries into Jax. And then I think into Leona it's okay, but into Cassante it's very, very annoying to play. Because the lane is kind of hard to play and you can't make progress inside and you have so much disruption. Like Cassante W and Cassante Ulti is like really annoying for Jax, especially in teamfights. So we outrange, we have better jungle, um, faster clear, we have we, we just have a much better composition here. And what else do you notice about Pain Gaming Draft? Smolder is what guys? Smolder is AD, right? Ezreal is AD. What? Ezreal is AD. Giga Jax is AD. They're full AD, right? So they're playing full AD composition into Leona Cassante with no mid prior, counter pick jungle, and no push bot. Right? So for me, this, this draft is actually kind of unlosable. Um, and no offense to Sarkis and no offense to Coelho, but I was both their dads in this series. No offense. I can talk about the red series after. Yeah, I lost. We played fucking bad. So it, it just comes down to, okay, we can't give pain Maokai. We can't give pain Rumble. Rumble's the best top lane in the patch by far. And Ash gives bot prior to pain, which is one of the ways they want to play. It gives an engage option to pain. So it's probably one of the best champions for pain, right? So you either have to give Ezreal or Ash, right? And by that logic, you're telling me, okay, so I have to ban Lilia, Corky, Ezreal, Smolder, Rumble, Maokai, and Ash, and Jin. You can't ban every champion. You have to make a choice, right? Um, and in this game, by the way, Corky and Cassante is much better inside, or should be. Because this Jack should always be behind. He should always be outranged. And Corky wins side versus Smolder until free items. So... We are we need to kind of snowball the game early, but we should. And they want to scale until like 40 minutes into the game. That's essentially the game plan. And you need to guys you need to think about like the team that we're playing against, right? So Pain is Pain is a team that really wants to play early games, early mid games, because they're not a team that plays side lane very well in general. They're not a team that plays side lane very well. They're not a team that plays uh, three lanes very well. If I was playing versus, for example, Loud, we would need to change uh the draft completely so for example okay let's go to titan people say oh my god like guys you can't draft just on the champion right so i have to ban ash by your logic i have to ban Jin by your logic and i have to ban ezreal and i have to ban malka and i have to ban rumble right um you could leave malka ash and rumble open No, but they can always choose, right? They can always just ban one. So, I mean, like, you, you can't leave Maokai, Ash, and Rumble open because they'll just first pick Rumble. And then it's just fucking bad. They, like, Sejuani's open, right? So, say I ban Sejuani. They can either take Maokai Cannon into Rumble and they have the best jungle for their, for their team composition. Or they can take Rumble with Maokai and we have to play Sejuani into it. Like, Maokai is... is a much better champion for them, right? So guys, like, let's just say in this game we won, you guys would say that I'm a draft genius, right? And if you actually look at the contents of the game, what happened? Enemy team has Ezreal, one of the strongest patches, uh, one of the strongest champs in the game, in um, level 1 to 3. Right? No, but both sides have great picks. It just comes down to execution, guys. Let's actually look at the game. Let's actually look at the, 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 the way the game played out, right? So VKS, for some reason, decides to late invade blue side with Ezreal. So we're outranged and we lose level one. 
right? Bro. For people that say that Ezreal has magic damage, you're really kind of trolling, you know? Like, the only magic damage you have is WE. I mean, yeah, it's basically WE, like 80% of his damage, because you can't count his ultimate as magic damage, right? 85 to 90% of Ezreal's damage is AD, bro. Right? Um, so if you kind of round out the, the stats, I mean, they're definitely full AD. <coughs> Jax, Jax is like 95% magic, uh, physical damage, guys. It's very, it's, it's, it's not like this, guys, okay? So, I mean, it, realistically speaking, um, one, if you count on, with execution playing in CB low, bro, you'll never win. Okay, bro, how do you win CB low then? How did Loud win four times in a row? This is the problem, right? Like, a lot of people are, are talking without thinking what they're saying. Why not Malphite? Because Malphite is not a Jax counter. You still lose side. And they have a lot of mobility. They have Rakan, they have Ezreal. Like, the reason Loud won Pain for many years is because Loud played a split push style and they just played to split and they played hard to Robber and Wiser fell behind in the game. And, and Wiser can play three champions. The, the whole reason Loud beat Pain so many times in a row is because of execution. Right? Um, so... We late invade, and we end up having to leave. This late invade can be good too. If prods, Decim if everyone walks in with Decimus together here, and we just flash on one target and fight, it can work. But is it a good play? No, it's not that Pain chokes against Loud. It's just Loud, stylistically, is much better against Pain. Because Pain do not know how to play side lane. So the reason Loud was beating Pain is because Loud could always play side lane, and in early mid game, they could neutralize. So it was very, very hard in terms of execution for Pain to ever beat Loud because Pain have a very flawed game plan, right? So we, we level one invade, we get mega chunked, and now Lilia is really late to clear and Sejuani has a tempo lead, right? So already the game is really bad. Um, and then we have the grub fight, right? So this grub fight, Kuri ints. Kuri insta engage. We one shot Kuri, but we get chunked. So now what you have to think about is okay, Kuri's dead, but he's up in 12 seconds. It's early game. Smolder, Ezreal, Sejuani, and, and Jax all have flashes, and we have bad condition. So here, the best way to the best option here is to just drop. So what really happened here? So one, we're, we're already really far behind in tempo in a game where we should have a lead because of our level one plan. Right, um, and we should leave the grubs because, like Leona entered, but they have all tools. But what's really important is okay. It starts from here. Cassante plays one v three top, undiveable. He sucks one turn. We get mid priority, and then we get control on river. Beautiful, right? Beleza, Beleza. Now Gigo with half HP, half mana wants to base TP. Right? I didn't ban Smolder because it's terrible for them. So now Cassante wants to base TP, and we have river control. So we just need to not give an engage. But we give Kuri the engage, which ends up being good for us because Kuri is inting. But because of Jack's TP, Cassante feels obligated to TP instantly. Whereas here, we should just give the confidence to Cassante to just press B and TP later because we can just kill Kuri and get out, right? Or react TP to if Jax overextends, right? So now the problem is Cassante TPs with half HP, half mana. We're chunked. He doesn't get to base and reset. And. Uh, Jax, Sejuani, Smolder, and Ezreal all have flashes. So they can kind of play on limits. And what we need to do is we need to choose. We need to choose to either drop because they have all spells and all flashes and death, death time is very low, right? Or we need to choose to engage instantly on one side, right? We need to instantly Leona flash Q or Leona flash E, Jin W and try kill one guy, right? With the numbers that we have. So we dropping is better for sure. But we need to choose. This TP was not necessary as well. So what ends up happening is Jin ulties to start the fight. But as you can see by body language, I think Pro Delta is scared of Scuttle Crab a little bit. We're, we're really slow to engage. And we're really slow to make a decision. Right? So now Ezreal is just playing on limits. 
And now they're playing to buy time for the for the for the Rakan. But they know they have all tools to play. This is where like pen gaming was much better than us. Right? We used all our tools and they still have their tools. And their champions outrange us when we don't have tools. If we have Jin Ulti or Leona Ulti, we have a lot of tools and we outrange them. But we, when we don't have these things, they outrange us. So now it comes down to they want to they, they want to kind of play on limits and wait until Rakan. So what we need to do is explode on them. Or we need to drop, right? But we don't, right? We end up playing the fight. We get sucked in one turn. Pro Delta's taking random damage. We're very, very slow to make this decision. Our Pro Delta's the one calling here. And then we end up getting sandwiched, right? This should never happen. So this is this is a really this is just really bad execution. There's nothing there's nothing around it. It's just really bad gameplay. Um, and it, it's just very clear in this game that the players are very nervous, right? So people are saying draft gap, but realistically for me, this draft is like seven to three. Especially considering pain, it might be eight to two to VKS. But we do a level one drop, we do a level one big mistake, and then we end up all dying on grubs, right? Which makes all of enemy teams super accelerated. And even after, even after, the game stalls. So why does the game stall? Two reasons. One, their comp is all AD. So even with Smolder, this fucking fed, their comp is all AD and they just don't do enough magic damage to win. And we outscale. It's Sejuani versus Lilia, right? Corky scales very well into the game. He has three items. We're spiking right now. Jin scales very hard. Pain is inting because this is, this is their problem. Pain don't know how to close games. Pain don't know how to play three lanes. Pain don't know how to split push, right? So the game is even in a game state where we have all tools and enemy is all AD. So we've won every fight for the last 10 minutes. So the game is even. Enemy is all AD. The game is like in our hands. The game is in our hands. And what do we end up doing? My Jin with no flash. We have full vision on Jax. We have full vision on Jax, guys. We're calling Jax, 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 guys. Like, listen to decode the stars. Here, we're calling Jax. We know full position. Smiley with no flash, no cleanse. And Corky with zero proximity on Corky. Steps up. And face tanks. And my tanks are in Af Africa, right? So, we, we lost this game from, like, individual mistakes. We straight up lost the game from individual mistakes. It was Smiley. And then it was like a dismiss early early game like late invade uh, early game late invade, and then it was Prodelta on the grub call, right? So if you look at drafts and and the way that we play the map, I think we played the map better, but we made bad decisions when it comes to team fighting. We entered on the grubs, we entered on level one, and we entered on mid wave. That's literally why we lost the game, right? So, so we can listen to decode the, decode this thing after, but for me this draft is just very very good. For VKS, Pain have no mid prior. Pain have losing jungle matchup with no mid prior and getting outscaled. Bad top matchup, push on bot um, with counter pick support, outrange in win side, because this Jack should never be in a good state in the game. And Lilia is also very good into Jacks. <clears throat> so we just execute really bad, we play really bad, and then we go into the second game. So here is the choice. We take away Ezreal and we take away Ash, and if they blind Jin, we can just play Misfortune into it. But we have the we have the Maokai, so it's very easy to play fights. We get the most OP jungler in the game. We get Maokai, and they respond with Ivan. Maokai is an Ivan counter, right? In both games, they lose jungle priority and they blind Smolder. So what do we get? Once again, we know we can play a lot of things into 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 this into this Smolder. We practiced Draven. We had Draven mid ready. We had Azir, which is a small counter. And we have champs like Corky. So we're always going to get mid push. We have counter pick jungle. They banned Rumble, okay? Look look at the fucking game. Um, so we have the best jungle in the game, counter pick jungle. We have mid push and we have the best AD left in the game because Ezreal and Ash is gone. And we get the best blind and blue side. Renekton, right? Well, at least in this game. We can drop to 4-5. I think dropping to 4-5 is maybe slightly better. But against Pain Gaming, Wiser historically performs very bad against Renekton. So, I think if Pain played a good game in this series, we should have got 3-0 yet. Yeah. I think we choked really hard. So, so then we take the Jin, and then we ban 280 carries. 
right? We ban Kaisa and we ban Misfortune, which is the best for their composition, and they have for Zaya. So what does this mean? Once again, they have <laughs> like Olaf versus Renekton is actually like not good for the Olaf side, bro. Like it's fine in the matchup, but both sides are 50-50 and Renekton gets a push early game. So now we have mid push, best AD. It's it's the freest matchup in bot lane. We have best blind top and Wyther is on Olaf. The three best champions for Wyther are Kasante, Nar, and Rumble. So he's off all of his comfort. And they have jungle counter. Right? Um No, we, we are worse than Pain. Let's be real. In this series, Pain completely outplayed us. They were the better team today. In this day, Pain was the much better team. But I think it's egregious and, and facetious to say that Pain was like so much better. Like in the last game, they had a full AD draft, worst draft, and the game went to 31 minutes and it came down, or 35 minutes or 31 minutes, and the game literally came down to Smiley dying with no flash against an all AD comp and two tanks, right? So this is a really close game. I think everyone agrees. We're only 1k gold down against a full, K, full, full AD comp. And a comp where we should be ahead because we make really silly mistakes early game and they still can't close. And in second game, we have... <laughs> we have range. We spike hard at two items. We have the best jungle. I think this is the draft where people can argue that Pain maybe won the draft, in my opinion. If there's a, if there's a draft where Pain can argue that they won the draft, this is the draft. Why? Because Ivan is very strong level 1 to 4. And in this game, Ivan and Olaf together is very difficult to deal with at 3 plus items. At 3 to 4 core, the game is very, very hard for our team. Right? Nautilus is going to get melted. Right? So, once again, for me, support pick was a problem. It came down to comfort. Um, Pradelta was very confident on Nautilus. We got self we self kind of picked our support. But it's fine. What happens in the game? Well... In my opinion, we have a slightly worse draft than Pain Gaming. I think our 1 2 3 was okay. Our third pick could be better, right? And I think that Pain had the better draft in game 2. I think we had the much better draft in game 1. I think Pain has a slightly better draft in game 2. But we play better in game 1, right? But we, we play better in game 2. So what ends up happening in game 2 is we kind of go even and then we make two really good plays on the map. One is <coughs> we take T2 bot with the so called Herald bug, which was allowed in LCK LPL. Xavier Lowell, we asked Riot, and they used it themselves on scrims, but apparently it's a bug, um, which Riot said we can use, by the way. And um, we... I mean, Jin in both games performed really well, right? Like, Jin in this game performed really well. He was top damage... Five, he, he was 3-2-9 with 3 core, 1v9 in this game. In this game, he was really fed too, right? So what happened this game? The game was somewhat even, but we used Herald really well on bot side, and we ended up trading top really fast. So, so from this position... The game is unlosable, even though I think Pain has a slightly better draft. Right? I think, still, Victor gets prior into the Smolder. We get prior. We can challenge prior bot. We can contest prior top. We have the best jungle. But I think that at three to four items, Olaf is much better. So I think Pain is favored in this draft, but with 3k gold up with position, and we're, in sp we're spiked, right? So something that Pain does, something that Pain does, is they never know how to play through side properly in objectives. They don't play through side fast if they don't have mid prior. They always play mid into side, which is really troll. So now we know we're doing, they're doing the pain gaming, which is like they play through here really late. They're very late to set up. And we have full position and full vision. So it's very hard for them to enter. So what do we need to do here? All we need to do is Leleko needs to sit on left side and we need to play to peel. Right? Now, the reason we need to play to peel is because Pain is playing a composition that can play in two turns really well, right? What I mean by two turns, Olaf can suck one turn of engage with his ultimate and run at us. And Rel can follow up engage and Daisy and Ivan can follow up shield. So what you need to do is you need to play on range with Victor, who is outranging and stronger than the Smolder right now. The Smolder is actually not very strong. I know he's 30 CS up. But he has very little stacks, guys. The Smolder, I, I, if, they, if you click on Smolder at one point, you'll know what I mean. The Smolder is very, very weak at this point. He has 2.5 core. He's a full core behind Lelik. Because his items are more expensive. So what ends up happening here? Well, we hold 
this bush and Smiley calls to play one more bot wave. But this bot wave does nothing because there's no objective bot. There's no tower, there's no objective, there's nothing to play for, right? So all we need to do is play here and hold formation. Victor just needs to press E, Jin needs to press W on Victor E, Noodles just needs to hold his spells, and we just play on poke with Maka E, understand? And then it's very, very hard for, for the red side to play. So we do have a ward in this bush, and we already know that they're playing through bots, so we don't need to ward the banana. So Leleko plays for bot wave, because Smiley calls for bot wave. We lose our formation here. We break our formation. So what it should be is, Titan and Pain Gaming should have a very hard time taking this pixel brush and entering into Dragon. But we make the mistake and we break our formation. Beleza. Tour de vent. All we need to do is understand, Leleko lost Flash here. Okay? So now we know that Pain Gaming have proximity. So what do we need to do? We need to drop and we need to replay here. No, the Flash didn't lose the fight. Predalco lost the fight. We need to play here. We need to play as a group as five here and just play as a ball and let them come into us. Because Nautilus will hold ulti and ulti the back line. So the follow up on Olaf will be very slow. We'll suck one turn and then we'll play one turn again after, right? But the problem is. <clears throat> No, the problem was that Leleko went for bot wave, guys. Okay? Pay attention to the class. Pay attention to the class. So Leleko should not be here to begin with. We should not play for this bot wave. We should play here already. We should be playing to hit Drake and poke them as they come in. So now, Leleko is out of position. And here, what we should be thinking is... Okay, because Leleko is out of position, and they're playing as pro with proximity as 4, Leleko can't hit. Because they can play as a block as 4, and Leleko is 1v4. Because he's isolated, right? But what Prodelta does is he engages 1v4. He engages on the Olaf, right? And the reason he engages on the Olaf is he thought Olaf had no ultimate. So if you, if you listen to um, decode, the, decode the... What's it called? We, we can actually watch it and you, you'll kind of understand what I mean. Um, so you can actually listen to both situations. This is game two. Yeah, 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 but... So here... So, so Giga says we don't engage here. He knows exactly what's happening. Um, and Leleko got called to hit bot wave. So this is Smiley yeah, inting. Okay. So here, what's the correct call? The correct call here is Leleko to say, guys, I'm out of position. I can't hit, I can't hit, I can't hit. And then they reposition, but they don't. That's point one. But point two is. So Prod says Olaf no ult and engages on the Olaf with ult, but Giga just said don't fight, and Leleko is out of position, right? So what ends up happening is Olaf has ult, Giga doesn't want to fight, Dismiss doesn't want to fight, Smiley doesn't want to fight. Olaf starts running at the Ol at the Nautilus, and they full engage, and Leleko can't hit. Look, our strongest member can't play. So if Smolder can't play, and, and Victor can't play, because Smolder and Victor are matching, then it's much better for Pain, right? Because Pain is playing 4v4, and this Olaf has ulti with Ivan, right? So this group of four is not playing with Leleko. So here, there's a lot of issues. One, as a team, they should understand how to play this team fight. But two, Prods engages. And three, Leleko... Uh, there's actually three issues. Leleko doesn't say anything. Leleko should say... Guys, I can't hit, I can't hit, I can't hit. This game, I think Payne had a slightly better draft, but we ended up getting ahead in the game, and we had we were in a position to win, but we mis-executed. So now we're 0-2. But both games, if you look at the context, right, it's 26 minutes in, Vivo Cade is in a strong, dominating winning position, right? And in the first game, they had a better draft in a strong, dominating winning position, and both games were very, very close. Within 1k gold lead, and this game, we had a 2k gold lead, right? So realistically, this is a situation where it could have been a 3-0 day. It could have been a 3-0 day where VKS just 3-0 is a pain gaming. But we lose both games. Beleza, Tour de Bang. Bombs you nice. Bombs you nice, right? So now, let's look at Jogo Prez. Because we're down two games and they have the momentum, we need to do something to change the momentum. And this is very obvious. So this is the situation where we just say we need to pick Callista to just take the fucking 
momentum away from them, right? And to be honest, Titan thought we don't know he plays Ziggs. We knew that Ziggs was a possibility, but my team was convinced that he would be very bad at it. Right? But what's what's delusional? I mean, both games we're losing to micro and, and small mistakes. So, <coughs> so Ziggs is actually a really good champion into Callista. Ziggs is a really good champion into Callista. We thought he could play it, but he would be bad at it, and he wouldn't pick it. So, this this Callista pick was very obvious. This Callista pick was very obvious. Both sides knew that they would answer the Callista, and we would play Callista. So yeah, I did fart. Um, so it just comes down to. Uh, yeah, I just fought it. It just comes down to the, the fucking play, right? It comes down to the play, which is, uh, we have bot prior, we have counter pick support, we have mid contests, we scale in the game, we have jungle contest, we have jungle counter, and we have top counter. So we have Nara into Kasante, top counter, we have Vi into Sejuani, which is, um, jungle counter, we have Azir into Smolder, which is mid counter, we have Kalista into Ziggs, which is Ziggs favorite, but we have support counter. Alistar into, into Rel, so bot matchup is actually not easy for them. <laughs> so they have three losing lanes and three and losing jungle matchup. Right? So if you look at the game, we're up 3.5k gold, 5-0. If this is a scrim game, this game finishes in 25 minutes. This game finishes at 25 minutes. But we choke, right? We choke. So the game drags all the way out to Elder Dragon. And why does it go all the way out to Elder Dragon? Well, let's look at some of the situations. We have three dragons up. We take the Nash. And, I mean, look at the way we play here. So we know enemy Smolder. I think he was here or the, or the fight before. It was a fight before in Drake 3. It was Drake 3. We know we have Kalista, Alistan, and uh, Vi, guys. So what what is the kind of theme of our composition? The theme of our composition is to engage guys all three drafts all four drafts are bad for fucking pain in terms of team fighting and i'll go over that in a second right architecture valopala sub tamo junto so so here we have winning jungle winning ad winning mid uh, winning bot winning jungle winning mid and winning top matchup okay and we have a full engage comp into a range comp. Ziggs and Smolder want to want to poke, and we want to hard engage. Hard engage counters poke. So well, how do we want to fight? We want to just fucking go in. We want to fucking go in and fuck them, right? Sopa despa stop sopa desapato vale pelo sub gratícia obrigado pelo sub obrigado Deus tamo junto tamo junto viu so. What should we do? Okay, guys, let's look at the let's look at the situation. We're playing into Drake 3. The game is a complete stomp. Smolder, no flash, guys. So if Smolder is no flash, what should we do? We should engage, right? But they shouldn't disrespect us. The games are really close, you know. We should engage, right? So we take River, we herald mid, and the call here should be to hard engage into enemy team. But you know what we're calling here? We're calling to flip the dragon. We can just press alt and kill them, but we're playing to flip the dragon. So we are for sure choking here. We are fucking choking. We're up 3k gold and we're fucking choking on a fat cock. So here, we're hitting the fucking dragon. Why do we give this line bush? Why do we give this banana bush? Just fucking Q ult, Smiley ult, and they're fucking all dead. They're all dead. They have no flash, smolder, and a fucking Ziggs. How they win fight? We have Mega now, impossible. We have Azir ulti, Azir flash, Vi ulti, Callista ulti, can't, can lose. Can lose. That prot's here, and the team is calling to flip the dragon. So what do we do? We flip the dragon. And then what happens? We get three men engaged. Ziggs ulted and died. But if we engage first, they fucking die. 
They fucking die. But what should happen? Here, they're already dead. In my screen, they're dead. In my screen, they're dead. Fucking Callista dashes forward. Giga dashes forward. Predelta WQs. Callista ulties. My ulties. They're fucking dead. This smolder is dead on my screen. This smolder has no flash. But we flip the dragon. So the game becomes messy because we're choking. And we, we call to flip the dragon three times. And we lose all three flips. So here, to be honest, it's a mega draft gap. We end up still securing this win, but realistically, let's have a look at the game, okay? We are full engage into poke, so thematically we win here, right? Thematically we're winning. This is game two. We have range plus, like, plus peel into range. We're playing range versus range. They're not playing engage. They're playing Zaya, which is to disengage, and Smolder, which is to poke, right? So when you play disengage compositions, poke compositions, counter disengage compositions and engage compositions are countered by things like Zaya, right? Do we want to engage this game? No. We want to play with Jin and Victor Poke and Maokai Poke, right? So thematically, they lose team fights here. They lose game three team fights. And let's look at game one. What do we have, guys? We have engage with engage, but we have counter engage with Lilia. So all three games, actually, thematically, is really, really fucking bad for pain. Really, really fucking bad for pain. They have three losing lanes in almost every game, losing jungle matchup, losing thematically in terms of the team fight, and we're mis-executing. That's the truth. We're mis-executing, and you can see this. So now, game four. They end up first picking Italy, and we have two options here. So, Lilia has three counters. Lilia has Vi, in which... You can try to explode the game before Lilia gets Zonius. <coughs> or you can pick Viego, which duels the Lilia with Azir. So Viego finds the Lilia and tries to 1v1 and stops Lilia from impacting the map and Azir free scales. Right? Or you can opt to play things like Maokai, which are going to be banned inside the game. There is one other option that we could have picked here, which was to pick Cork in Italy. So on stage. On stage, we were discussing what to pick, right? On stage, we were saying we should pick Corky because we don't want to give them Corky Lilia, which is too comfort for pain. And they will have mid push, and we can play Nidalee, Corky Lilia. Uh, we, we can play Nidalee, Corky, and Jin, which is outrange comp into Lilia, which is good into Lilia with mid push and counter pick, right? Counter pick support. The problem is, and and here here really is the problem. <coughs> We just had a game where Azir 1v9 the game. So Viego is a Lilia counter, historically, right? So we just had a game where, where Azir 1v9 the game. And Lerko said, give me Azir. So in a best of five, the meta changes, right? The meta changes and the, the champion strength changes. So Azir Viego this game was really completely fine. If in the game, my bot lane didn't go 0-6, you guys would say, oh my god, this Viego pick so clutch, fucking amazing. But because you guys are stupid, and you don't understand League of Legends, you say, oh my god, why pick Viego? Unfortunately, that's actually the truth. I'm sorry. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. Bro. It's... No offense. No offense. Guys, it's Jin, Lil Jin Nautilus. Jin Nautilus, first of all, Azir Corky matchup is Corky gets pushed, but Azir scales for free. Jin Nautilus always gets push wave one, two, three. It's Alistair. So my bot lane should get push in this matchup and is a winning matchup bot. One, a 2v2. And my Viego is counter picking jungle with a free healing jungle and a counter pick top. So once again, them thematically, we're in a really, really good position and we have very good results on Viego too. So once again, let's go and have a look at Viego stats, right? Because people are saying, oh my god, Viego is such a trash champ. It's because you don't know the game. No offense. It's because you don't know the game. So one of the best counters to Lilia is actually Viego. Right? Weak against Lilia here, but you have to look at top regions too, right? One of the best counters to Lilia inside the game the thematically has always been Lilia. You can't see because I need to log in, but um, let's have a look at like all. 
Okay, it's 40%. So maybe maybe not on the stats, but for us it was. For us it was. So maybe maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Okay? Maybe Viego's fucking trash. Right? Maybe Viego's fucking trash. It's 10 games. Right? But that was our read on the situation. That was our read on the situation. Okay, okay. Calm down. Okay, calm down. That was our read on the situation. So our three plans were Malkai into Lilia, Vine to Lilia, Viego into Lilia, or Nidalee into Lilia. <coughs> but just a reminder once again, guys. It's a best of five. We just had a 7-0 as year last game, right? So, my bot lane is meant to get push bot 2v2. My bot lane is meant to get push bot 2v2. But my bot lane loses push 2v2, gets solo killed, gets solo killed again holding the wave 1v2. And then my bot is 0 1 4. Okay? So I, I do want to say, okay, maybe. Maybe the Viego pick was bad. Viego is not playing into ranged champions. We're playing Viego into, into Lilia. And we have so much setup for this Viego, right? We have Jin, we have Nordal, so I can lock a champion down. You can play for you can play for resets. You also have Nasus Wither into champions like Corky, into champions like Lilia. And you also win side, right? So you're meant to push 2v2 bots, but we're 1-4 bots. Our top counter pick matchup is 0 1, but mid matchup is fine. Jungle matchup is 0 0 0. So, if <laughs> here's my question, right? If we didn't have a game where my bot lane starts off 1 5, right? 1 5, and the game is completely even, and my Ezreal is not 4 2, would we have reached the same conclusion? For me, this is just classic results orientated. Breakdowns, you know. It's, it's, for me, it's just results orientated gameplay. The, the truth is, we have free scaling mid, kind of pick top, we win side against Pain, and we have good matchup bot. That's the truth. Right? Jin one skin is just a takeaway from Pain. Right? I explained this many times, I'm not going to explain it again. Pain is a team that wants two sources of engage, so it's very important that Pain can play things like Jin. They're playing Ezreal because we took away Jin from them. <coughs> right? To give you context, Pain is 100% win rate over 9 games with setup 80 carries. Right? So. So yeah, I'm very sick. To be honest, the series is very sad. Um, if we ban Ash, we have to give them Ash. If we ban Ezreal, they get Ash, and Ash is much worse here. So it's it's a choice, you know. We thought that too in the first Pain series, right? I got very drunk after the after the series, yeah. I got very drunk. So it's like okay, we have to ban Ash, we have to ban Jin, we have to ban Ezreal too. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's just the way that the team functions, right? So, if you actually look at the series, the series was really close. <laughs> game 1-2 was really close. Game 1-2 was really, really close. In Game 2, we were in a winning position. In Game 1, we were in a winning position after throwing early. Right? So. So, that's just how it is. But I, I would say it's been a great journey. The players made a lot of progress. And I do think that the players grew a lot through this year. Right? Right? 